paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This is the story of the most advanced warship of its kind in the world. At the most dramatic time in its short history. Make sure that we are ready for anything. HMS Duncan is a Royal Navy Type 45 destroyer worth over a billion pounds, bristling with technology. This ship can track a cricket ball sized contact and three times the speed of sound at about 100, 150 miles. That's backed up by weaponry, so my Sea Viper missile system is the best air defence system in the world. But this state-of-the-art ship is also home to 280 men and women. Do you understand the charges against you today? Yes, sir. Herding cats, mate. That's what I'm doing, herding cats. Our cameras have been given unprecedented access to Duncan's dramatic seven-month mission as they come face-to-face -face with Russian forces. There is a challenge from Russia at the moment. That's aircraft passing the stern port, look out! And the crew find themselves on the front line as missiles rain down on Syria. It's pretty scary to think that we are literally at the centre of everything that's happening. They're just waiting now to see what happens and see if anybody buys at us. Previously... Take the ship in hand, steer 170. Young officer Will had the biggest test of his career. If I wasn't to pass this, in theory, I could get thrown out of the Navy. Vital supplies were delayed. If it was my Amazon order, I wouldn't be happy, put it that way. Duncan set sail for Syria. Up to 75 people were killed in a despicable and barbaric attack. And was ordered to defend an allied strike force. Donald Trump tweeted that the missiles are coming. That's certainly not something that's normal. This is as serious as it gets. Royal Navy's HMS Duncan left home more than three months ago. The ship's captain, also known as its commanding officer, is 40-year-old Eleanor Stack. We always say the commanding officer is the ship, and the ship is the commanding officer. Uh, and a, a naval tradition is that you are called by the name of your ship. So I am Duncan. That's a huge responsibility. And the really harsh reality is, if I get killed, then somebody has to step into my shoes. Duncan has been sent to the eastern Mediterranean, 200 miles off the coast of Syria. Just a week ago, Syria was accused of attacking its own people with chemical weapons. This massacre was a significant escalation by that very terrible regime. In response, an allied strike force from Britain, America and France have assembled and are awaiting orders to fire on Syria's weapons factories. Duncan's job is to sail close by and keep the strike force safe. We train for this moment all the way through our naval careers. But many people will go through their naval careers without ever doing this for real. You can never really anticipate how people are going to react the first time. Duncan's crew are waiting nervously. This evening, I have authorised British armed forces to conduct coordinated and targeted strikes. The politicians have made a decision. My thoughts are with our brave British servicemen and women who are carrying out their duty with the greatest professionalism. Thank you. 
received uh, updated intelligence. But there is a requirement to bring the ship to a heightened state of preparedness in order to be in the best possible condition. Ben Dorrington is ordered by the captain to bring the ship to maximum alert. Hands to action stations, hands to action stations. Assume CBRN DC state one condition two. They've been told the attack could begin any minute. What are those? Uh, first field dressings, we've got to give one to every member of the ship's company. We've received uh, intelligence that's necessitated the captain ordering the ship to uh, action stations. So we're just making sure that all the right personnel are in all the right weapon systems and sensors are in the highest possible state of preparedness. levels in HMS Duncan and to bring the ship to state one. The captain is addressing her crew. The missile strikes on Syria have begun. The strike package is now underway. I need you to settle down, focus and make sure that we are ready for anything. As the missile fire begins, Duncan is sailing alongside the strike force. The question on everyone's mind is what will happen next? Lawmakers warned that Moscow could view an airstrike on Syria as a war crime, saying it could trigger a direct military clash. With Syria's ally Russia voicing strong opposition to the strikes, the executive warrant officer, Martin Watson, now has a difficult job, keeping up the crew's morale. That's all I'm doing at the moment, just wondering, making sure everybody's all right. How are we guys, all right? Action stations, my role is to reassure people, uh, a lot of our young people, it's the first time that they've been to action stations. Uh, and classification wise, exactly, what I can be told is, is the E-War is probably uh, not as much as what can be told within the ops rooms. With access to the ops room limited, most of the crew are getting their updates from military radio. I've come on for some intelligence, what's going on? Russian President Vladimir Putin has condemned the missile strikes in the most serious way. There are reports that Russian battleships have left the country's naval base. Russia has threatened to fire back at the strike force. We're currently kind of right in the thick of the Russian forces at the moment. Uh, should there be any retaliation or any other event, we're in the best possible state to deal with it. It's, it's pretty scary um, and to think that we're at the centre, literally at the centre of everything that's happening. So the information we had off the radio said we had a, a number of uh, Russian ships that were uh, in our area who uh, sympathise with the, the Syrian regime. We do prepare for the worst case scenario, so if we do have a missile come through the ship, we are prepared for that. 140 miles, but what directions? Where are we now? You just come back to the centre. The EWO needs all the information he can get. I've got to the operations room for a, a tactical update of exactly what's going on. It's important when... Allied attack continues. Duncan's radar detects one of Russia's newest and most heavily armed warships, the Admiral Essen. Situation puts two Admiral Gagorovich class destroyers within the maximum engagement range. Admiral Essen uh, now 90 miles to the west. The Russians are in position to defend their Syrian allies. Duncan must now be ready to protect the strike force from any Russian counter-attack. Here we come, Captain. Here we are. Your focus is also on that group to the west. I'm just 
the main concern for everyone is what will Russia do next? We're just waiting now to see what happens and see if anybody fires, fires at us. HMS Duncan is at action stations. Nearby, an Allied strike force is launching missiles into Syria. RAF planes are taking off from Cyprus on bombing runs, just a few miles from Duncan's current position. On board Duncan, the NATO Commodore Mike Utley is in charge of protecting the Allied strike force from counterattack. There's a uh, coalition attack. Our role in that right now as a NATO ship is to suck in the picture, make sure we're situationally aware and we're ready to react as necessary. What you can't discount is a random counter strike, so we have to remain vigilant. Syria's ally, Russia, has threatened to retaliate. What you can't know 100% is how your challenger is going to react. You just can't account for it. So you have to be ready to defend yourself. I want you to go around, clear the desks, make sure everybody's ready, give everyone a pat on the back. There's going to be some uh, worried people about Ewo Martin Watson is continuing to reassure the crew. The importance of it is to make sure we're in the right, right rig, make sure we are ready to go for any kind of eventuality. Um, we may be here again for the, for the long haul. There is things happening ashore at the moment, and as soon as we know any more, what we can tell you, we will, we will feed on, on down and through classification-wise. Even though things may be happening ashore at the moment, that we're here in this alertness, readiness, and, and why we're at this state is just to, to protect Duncan. What's happening? What is happening? What's happening? 26-year-old chef Liam Fletcher is feeling the pressure. Just trying to get into the routine. Well, if you can get into a routine, at the end of the day, potentially we, we could get to war, so there's no such thing as a routine, really, at sea. We just have to step in. Food will be available from uh, 0415 and I'll keep you informed uh, as the situation develops from the Opsuma. That is all this time. The strikes have now been underway for two hours, but the crew still have to eat. It's weird to think that, that you know, there could be missiles flying. How far above our heads, I'm not sure exactly. I've still got to you know, make sure that the ship is fed. Don't stop, don't stop with some sausage on the baguette. Yeah. It just shows that our, our job never really stops, ever. Uh, we're at war now, so we don't do vegetarian options. <laughs> Good evening, uh, it's Mr. Duncan. Uh, we're speaking with an update. Mike. Information about the strikes is coming through from the ops room. President Trump has uh, just announced his thanks to the French and the British government and military forces for their assistance. At least uh, 58 missiles have thus far been uh, launched into uh, Syrian airspace in order to be ready for any response uh, should one materialise. We're not sure how long we have to be here. We just do not our preps and everything. 28-year-old steward Anton Matthews is one of Duncan's first aiders. Yeah, like serious level then. Missiles? What? What's the one that keep... I'm got you wondering, right, what's going to happen next? And what's really going to... You start thinking about families, you start thinking about what's the next move, you start thinking about are you prepared enough, you know? Just those are different thoughts going through your mind. Does it feel real? Yes, it does, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I mean, this, how much real can I get? The first food of the night is ready to go. Obviously, people have been 
up for a few hours now and they'll need a bit of morale and energy. So we're just going to distribute them now as part of the action lesson team. Um, so, how's the bacon sandwich trick? That's Jamie. Like an angel shitting in your mouth. Four hours after the strikes on Syria began, fresh intelligence is reaching the ops room. Now more than ever, Captain Eleanor Stack needs her weapons to be ready in case Russia make a move. Every single person in my ship's company is trained to think the unthinkable. What if a missile comes into my ship's side at this point? How are we going to react? Because if we've already thought about it, we're already prepared for it. Four Bulldogs, starboard launcher, up in Roger, attack directing north. Two, four, crosses. 36 year old Trigg has been in charge of one of the ship's main weapons all night. I'm the harpoon controller. So, if any surface vessels come within uh, a certain area of us, uh, I might be uh, might be called upon to uh, engage the, the missiles. What does that mean? Drop kick, I believe, is a uh, Russian aircraft. Duncan's radar is picking up something new. Russia have launched an aircraft. We've got a helix airborne that's from the Admiral Essen, east of our position at the moment at 24 nautical miles and tracking west. An attack helicopter has taken off from one of Russia's warships. We are manning all our systems, primarily our sensors, to make sure we maintain good tracking on it as it comes in. That helicopter could be reporting our position back to something which is armed with missiles. Flight controller Matt Rayside issues a warning to the Russians. Rotary aircraft, this is NATO warship Delta 37. You are closing my position. Please acknowledge, over. We let it know we're here as we do what's called a SOFA, so safety flight advisory warning. That then escalates by its through to the end zone of warnings, which is we've detected you, you're acting aggressively, and we will take action against you. But the helicopter is ignoring him. Hey, well. Yes, sir. Give me a brief on what uh, the helix could be armed with. The helix can be armed with torpedoes, depth charges, and mines. Roger. Let's get people visual looking out uh, for helix now. Visibility is poor. But Duncan's cameras have detected the helicopter just a few miles away. It's flying straight at the ship. We've got it on the thermal imaging quite clearly, so we've got the advantage. Matt tries again to tell the Russians to turn away. Rotary aircraft, this is NATO warship Delta 37. You are closing my position and request you remain outside of two miles for your safety. Please acknowledge over. Second sofa red, no response. He is testing our reactions, probing us to see what we will do. So the worst case scenario for us is a, an unintended escalation, which is why we have to be absolutely clear with our actions and with our warning process. If we start training weapons towards him, things like that, then it would only serve to make the situation worse. Duncan is on a knife edge. One wrong move could cause either side to open fire. Rotary aircraft, this is NATO warship Delta 37. A third and final warning is issued. I request you remain outside of two miles for your safety. Please acknowledge. Third so far, no response. Roger. Right, it's coming in from a close pass. Uh, you got the uh, imaging and cameras ready on the bridge. Roger. The Russian attack helicopter is now within half a mile. 
It's so close that a handheld camera has captured an image. It looks, it looks like there's a guy in the back, so I'll take a photo. Just there. The picture shows a Russian photographer leaning out of the helicopter. So it's routine. Once we got it visual, we could see they had their side door open. They were taking pictures of us. So basically, they're just trying to work out who we are, what we're doing, and then get the image of us so they can take it back. Duncan's crew held their nerve. You train uh, all the time with this, with this sort of threat, but actually seeing it for myself 1,500 yards away uh, is, is amazing. Almost six hours after they came to action stations, the call has just been made for the crew to stand down. We believe that strikes have finished. The command team is now in discussion with shoreside authorities related to the intelligence picture. Duncan, remain vigilant and stand by for further sit reps. With the strikes over, 23-year-old navigator Ryan Gregg is reflecting with the bridge team. We've had um, reports in that it's been completely successful. Um, the Syrians shot down a few of the missiles, um, but the three targets we were aiming to destroy to um, damage his chemical weapons, um, making ability have been destroyed. We're almost coming on watch again. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Our entire off watch has been stent in action. <laughs> we would have come off a few hours ago. Who's the bug? <laughs> I've switched, I've switched three on the other yeah, hand. So it's been in like, bed like since eight o'clock last night. Really, really strict. He's almost over. You know, when well, you, you sleep too much, I feel like I've been on a spa a weekend, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To one of the most stressful experiences of their lives, Duncan and her crew are moving west and away from danger. There is a lot to reflect on, uh, positive and negative some, in some places. The captain has gathered her most senior officers to take stock. It's been a, a fairly unique time in the Royal Navy and in terms of the way that this ship's company rose to that occasion, I was impressed very impressed and that is the message I want to get across to the ship's company especially the junior members of the ship's company who haven't been in an operational theatre before to make sure that they really understand how unique that was. ship's company have an opportunity to unwind. And the EWO is getting stuck in. So this is a bit of a um, decompression time for us. We've got the, uh, the whole ship's company getting involved in a, a bit of a sports afternoon. It's a, a mini Olympiad. And, um, and hopefully we'll win it as a senior ace mess. And that's what I'm here for. And if we can't, then we'll cheat. Get yourselves pumped up, let's go. Carry them out, the LO's too fresh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Any chance to relax and have a bit of downtime and get together as a, as a ship and have some fun, it's, it's always welcome. <laughs> it has been really intense and really unpredictable. But now at least we know we're going to have, like, today to get our thoughts together and stuff. The sailors of Duncan came together and delivered in a very tense and difficult situation. Uh, many of them for the first time they've ever done that. I'm immensely proud of what they did. Duncan's crew have come through the most challenging few days of their careers. But their journey isn't over yet. A 
After six months at sea, HMS Duncan has begun her long journey home. But 20-year-old able seaman Danny Oldfield is getting ready for the biggest test of his career. In case you've done ancillaries, yeah. in case what's next, so you mount the weapon. In case the weapon's mounted. Danny is vying for promotion. To get it, he needs to pass a gruelling exam called an AB1 board. Ready? But first, he must show he can handle the guns. S2, warning shot, burst fire, engage. Can you see it? 390? Yep. Investigate stoppage. It was quite difficult to get control of at first, because um, it's not like anything I've done before. Um, but yeah, it was, it was good. It was a lot of good practice. I'm, I'm glad I did that. Next, Danny needs some last minute help from his boss, Trig. Okay, so um, Danny's got his board coming up. If you have a look at that branch badge, that means that he's at the bottom of the pecking order at the moment. Hopefully, with a bit of guidance, he'll go from cleaning shitters to cleaning the flat, probably, instead. So, you know, just a little bit more. Okay, so do you know what the contents of the cable bag is? So I know one of them's, you've got eye wash. Yep. Mousing wire. Yep. Hammer. Yep. So how's your revising going? Um, it's going well, especially in gunnery, and um, I just need to focus more on the seamanship side of it oh, and the uh, general ship's knowledge. I say that's what I need the most work on, uh, which is why uh, we're doing this today. Yeah, I'll put it back. Danny's exam is tomorrow, so he hasn't got long to wait. All right, mate, happy? Yep, happy. Good stuff, bro. Nice one. Good. Rianne Dilmore is one of the ship's medics, and today is her 29th birthday. <laughs> Hi! Oh, it's been a oh, I'm excited! Do you know what it is? Oh my god, oh. it's a ukulele! <laughs> it's got a tuna! Because I'm going to need that because I'm tone deaf, yeah. so. Oh my god, that's so cool! I feel like <laughs> Moana! What's missing is my family, like my mum making a fuss of me and that, all the stuff that you normally miss at home. But um, you make the most of it here on ship, so try and make it happy. I can't play, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I think it's nice to make a big deal of people's birthdays because they're away from the family, they're away from the friends, away from everything that they normally do. So any little thing that you can do, you know, just to make the day a little bit happier, I think, means a lot. Do you play guitar? A bit. Oh, he gone, oh, teach me. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> it's time for Danny's exam. If he passes, he'll move off the bottom rung of the ladder and earn the rank of AB1. Put a lot of work into it. Um, so, hopefully, it should go all to plan. Right? Yeah, I'm good. Ready? Yep. Morning. All right. All right, our kid. Yep. D breaths. Morning, sir. I feel like I'm ready for it, so. There shouldn't be any problems. And... Have you all filled? Yes. You ready? I am ready. Sure? Sure. Maybe all filled, please come and take a seat. Thanks, sir. Danny will be grilled by his bosses. All four people in the room uh, have only got one aim, and that's for you to pass it to board today, okay? Yep. Okay. So, five attachments for the rifle. Um, so you've got bayonet, mm -hmm. magazine, mm -hmm. soft nose projectile, yep. um, SUSAT. Yep, what does SUSAT stand for? Um, oh, small unit. Oh. It's a nervous start. 
sight, unit, small arms, trilux. Good. That's the one. Good. Danny only has one hour to prove he's worthy of promotion. Duncan is five days from home. But down in the galley, 27-year-old chef Liam Fletcher's homecoming has been thrown into doubt after drinking vodka on board. I am in a bit of trouble, so I broke a rule on board a few weeks back. I drank spirits and junior rates are not allowed to drink spirits on board. I knew that and it was a day that just got out of control and I admitted to it. So I, as you should in the Navy. And we've got to face consequences. The worst case scenario is they prevent me from leaving, stoppage of leave. So when we get into Portsmouth from home, I might have to tell my family that actually I've been reprimanded and need to stay on board for the weekend, which is pretty brutal. But that is a possibility. So that's what's stressing me out at the minute is the thought that that might be the case. Liam's case will be heard at a summary hearing, an official disciplinary procedure. He's getting some help preparing his defence. How are you? I'm all right. Right, so table's tomorrow, yeah? So what I need to do is, obviously, a little bit of mitigation for yourself. So how has it affected you? It stressed me out because I don't usually get in trouble. I'm not one for getting in trouble. And especially in my naval career, I've not been in trouble. So. This is new to me, and I don't like it. So, so, so in all honesty, would you do something like this again? No. So when you were called in by the service police, uh, when they asked you, did you admit guilt straight away? As soon as he asked me, did I consume spirits on board, I said, yeah. All right, fantastic. And that's what it's all about. You've been honest straight away, which is brilliant. Liam's fate will be decided tomorrow. His homecoming hangs in the balance. Twenty-year-old Danny's wait is over. Come here. Yeah. He's about to find out if he won his promotion. Don't take a seat, please. Oh, thank you, much, sir. Uh, A.B. Oldfield, how do you think that went? Um, I think it went well. Um, well, the board uh, members and I absolutely agree. Um, so congratulations, oh, uh, you passed your A.B. One's board. Uh, in particular, we were really impressed by the depth of information about some of the subjects that you had. Um, and we would just say, you know, this is the first step up on the ladder with plenty more to go, I'm sure, throughout your naval career. Well done. Thank you very much, sir. I'm pleased he's passed because I, I invested a bit of time and effort into him. And I'd have been gutted if he'd have just sacked it off. But he didn't. He, he applied it. He learned, he, he learned what, I, what I had to tell him. He revised it. So he's done well. Yeah, I'm pleased. There was definitely a few curveballs in there. Um, yeah, they caught me off guard a, a, a couple times. Um, but I'd say it was about as hard as I expected it to be. I feel pretty good now, yeah. Um, it's a big relief that. Um, I'm glad I've got it out of the way. After almost seven months at sea, HMS Duncan is in sight of the UK. But when they get back, Chef Liam Fletcher might not be allowed off the ship. He's about to face a disciplinary for drinking vodka on board. Today is the big day because I find out the results of my punishment and what I'm going to get and what I'm going to be charged with. Today could either go really well or really bad. It's bad times, bad times for Fletch. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. Oh. The man who will decide Liam's fate is Executive Officer Richard Wallace, yep. so, Duncan's second in command. Then, I think the backbone to the military is, is discipline uh, and the ability to hold people to account for their behaviour. So as a fighting force, we've got to make sure that we're able to maintain uh, service discipline at all times under the most extreme of circumstances. For today's offence, the, the two options are a fine, 
uh, or a restriction of privileges and stoppage of leave. So on one hand, a, a mon monetary penalty, on the other hand, taking his liberty away from him. Chef Fletcher. Sir. Do you understand the charges against you today? Yes, sir. Do you admit or deny the charge? Admit. Before I consider any sentence that I may award you, uh, you or your assistant officer wish uh, to make a plea in mitigation? Yes, sir. Sir, the charge in question is Fletcher's first offence in three and a half years in the Royal Navy and is very out of character for such an intelligent individual. I can say he's shown great remorse for what he has done and this is evidence when he immediately admitted his wrongdoing when questioned by the Suez police on board. Thank you, Pio. OK, Chef Fletcher, uh, I've considered the facts of the case uh, and looked at the mitigation that's been provided by your divisional officer. Uh, I find the charge against you proved. However, I think it would not be in the service interest to uh, restrict your leave and therefore I'm going to opt for a fine. Uh, and I award you three days uh, pay uh, for the reasons which I've just uh, discussed. The hearing is now concluded. Chef Fletcher awarded fine three days pay on cut. Right turn, right wheel, quick march. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad it's done. It won't. I won't be. I know for one thing, I will not be stood in front of that table again. Are you uh, happy about the fact that you uh, you are going to leave, Doc? I am over the moon that they're not charging me to stop at your leave, and it is a fine, and I'll pay the fine. Obviously, I've got to pay the fine, and it's welcomed. I deserve it. I messed up, and that's a consequence. But I'm just relieved it's done now. Happy it's over. Liam can now enjoy the ship's return to Portsmouth. In just a few days' time, Duncan will finally arrive home. After tense interactions with the Russian military and the drama of the Syrian airstrikes, HMS Duncan is about to return to Portsmouth. The EWO, Martin Watson, hasn't seen his family for seven months. It's a bit of packing time, which is great. Um, it feels so surreal after such a, a long time away. When you're away on deployment, you end up buying lots of different trinkets and lots of different uh, presents for, for different parts of the family. And um, it just helps you almost like you're giving something back because you can't help but feel guilty. So I bought my children and a couple of different bags. So this is my little girl's bag. Um, so what I've got in there, I've got a, a little purse from Croatia. Uh, she's only seven, but I've stuck a Cosmopolitan in there as well. Probably something special that we've, we've got from the ship as well is these mini medals that we're going to give to our children. It's with the Duncan Tartan as well. Uh, a lovely ship's crest on, uh, on the back of it. And then on the other side, it's got our hero. So what we're hoping when we, we get to see our, our children and friends and family on the jetty, we'll be able to pin these on their, uh, on their shirts, which will be good. For Captain Eleanor Stack, there's one very important job left to do. Uh, we are going to clear lower deck for my commanding officer's terminally prizes, but also to thank everybody for their incredible amount of hard work over the last year. Right, stand up, ease, please. Chief Cody, stand up, ace! Before we start on the commanding officer's prizes, which I know you're all busy waiting for, Final few words from me. I am incredibly proud of every single one of you. My thanks go to you for the hard work that has led to great success. You can be justly proud of your achievements. Thank you and welcome home, HMS Duncan. The captain's prize giving ceremony rewards the sailors who've contributed the most during the mission. This rating has made it her primary mission to care for her fellow shipmates and provide plenty of entertainment while doing so. She's probably the only person to single-handedly mock the command team to our faces and get away with it. 
She's a true character of Duncan. It therefore gives me the most enormous pleasure to announce MA Rianne Chica Dilmore as the CO's best junior eight of the second half of this SNMG deployment. Well done, MA Dilmore. Well deserved. Here we go. Smile. Yeah, I've never been too embarrassed in my life. But yeah, it means a lot. It's been, um, it's been quite a trip, isn't it? Done a lot of stuff, so yeah, it's quite nice to get a little award at the end of it to show like that your hard work's appreciated. Yeah, it's nice. I'm ready to go home now. I think everyone's ready to go home now. Oh, can't wait! I want an Andos. <laughs> With their time at sea coming to an end, the crew have one last chance to reflect on the dramatic mission. We've been through the thick and the thin all the way through this deployment. You go to action for real and you make sure that everyone's all right. That's when it's different. Hands to action stations, hands to action stations. Sitting off Syria and watching cruise missiles go in. <laughs> Underway. 20 jets buzzed around us. That's aircraft passing the stern port, look out! That keeps things interesting. When you're at sea, all you've got is each other. We've had some laughs, haven't we, I suppose? <laughs> you form such a close bond with them, so when you are all down, there's someone there to pick you up. Do you know what? It was absolutely wonderful that what we did and, and how we did it together as a, a, as a ship's company. Nearly 200 days after they set sail, HMS Duncan is finally home. This morning is hashtag get Duncan alongside safe and sound. I can actually see my house from here. <laughs> I won't breathe in. <laughs> One straight line. Right lads, the lasses, it's not hard is it, tallest this way, shortest that way, I did say, I said it twice, herding cats mate, that's what I'm doing, herding cats. Excited, it's good to be um, back in the sight of a poppy. <laughs> To, to get ashore when it's, you can just see your family and your arms are aching from all the waving. So uh, yeah, you just want to get out there now and give them a big hug. It's good to be back. I've literally got nothing else to say. Yeah, it's really good. We look forward to coming back so much because we know we've got the support of our friends and family. We've got your big party tomorrow. With the yeah. Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue, had me thought. Yeah, that's been fantastic. I always feel a little bit emotional. Um, but when you've got three beautiful children like this, why not be emotional? Highs and lows, personal, professional, a floating community away for seven months uh, on mission. But I'm unbelievably proud of every single one of them.